Hello, I'm Myrna Loy and I'm here to promote my book, The Other Side of Tourism. I originally wrote it in 1993 and at that time I was pompous, I was intolerant, I was biased, I was like a little spoilt brat. Going to Jamaica as a British black person, thinking I was Jamaican, and realising that I was really British. I was more British than I was Jamaican. And and then what I've done is, um, 10 years later, I've gone back and reflected on my behaviour, on my attitude, 10 years before. Anyway, I'm going to give you, this is going to be like the Old Testament and the New Testament. So I'm going to give you a chapter from the Old Testament, okay? And it's called The Bag Left Hanim Gone. I woke up about 5 a.m. The bag was still there. Oh no, I exclaimed. I showered quickly and went downstairs and asked one of the guys at the desk if they thought Dead End was still going on. They said no, it would have finished at 2.30 a.m. But my nephew's bag is here, I howled frantically as if they could do anything about it. Thank God I had a number for him. He had been staying in a hotel in Montego Bay and I wondered how he had booked into a hotel and not been relegated to the status of a tourist. I surmised that it was more than checking into a hotel that determined one's designation. I asked the operator to get the number for me. As it was so early in the morning, the operator got the number quickly and someone picked up. Is by a dread there? I asked, thinking I'd better answer him by his native non de plume. No, him called the same Ghana CLM with him two friend. When did he call? Sometime this morning. Sometime this morning, I repeated flabbergasted. He could have called me at the same time. But his bag is here. He's left his bag here and I'm leaving this morning. The hotel would not be responsible for it after I check out. I don't know what to do. Verbiage spewed out of my mouth uncontrollably. I was angry. I was disoriented and marginally hysterical. How could he do this? He knew I was leaving. I could not fathom any excuse that could exonerate his behaviour. If he had the decency to his former roommates that he was leaving to go to Salem... Why couldn't you have shown me the same courtesy? So what am I supposed to do with it? Bring it come, her voice said calmly. Bring it come? How much is it going to cost to bring it from Grosvenor Street to where you are? About five dollars. I had 200 Jamaican dollars in my purse. I will still have enough to buy my breakfast when I got back. I asked for the address. I don't know the address, you know. The Hotel de Pan Top Road. Top Road? What is the name of the street? Ah, oh, man, he said with a chuckle. Just tell him, say it there, Pan Top Road. A top of the O's is them. A road. <laughs> a road on top of the houses. How is a driver going to know where to go without a proper address? In Winua, man. In Winua. Trust me, man. Just, t just bring the bag off. A man hailed down the taxi for me in about five minutes. I was relieved. The man was right. He did know exactly where to go with minimal code word instructions. Without the name of a road, without the number of a street, with a signpost, that's all they needed to find their way to a destination by landmarking in their own language. I was amazed at their method of communication. It was now 6.15 a.m. and we arrived outside the hotel within 10 minutes. I went inside the hotel and put the bag on the floor. This is for room 8909, I told them, and immediately made a motion to exit the hotel. No, you can't leave the bag, Vessel. You have to wait till someone come pick it up. So as them don't collect it. I just spoke to someone a little while ago. They know it's coming. He ignored me and made the phone call. Somebody has just delivered a bag here, you know. You need to come down if you come accept it. 
I assumed the answer was in the affirmative. I confirmed and it was so. I turned to leave, not wishing to meet any more Winston's Gregory. The driver was doing something with the spark plugs. When he saw me, he got back into the car and we were back in the hotel within 15 minutes. The return drive gave me some time to think. I understood now why Winston was in Jamaica. Only his fellow natives would tolerate his behaviour. America would have hardened me, but it hadn't. I should have made him lugger lugger with him back instead of offering to look after it for him. I should have made him walk all the way to dead end. Realising at this point that notwithstanding the majority of Jamaicans are polite, punctual and considerate, I find it difficult to live in an undisciplined culture that Winston had aspired to. Order, punctuality, integrity was important to me, but these traits were not taken seriously by the people I'd in interacted with on this journey. I deduced that time was both irrelevant, irreverent and relative in the Jamaican culture. To say I will be dear in a couple of hours will could range from 2 to 24 hours. Time was a critical anon anomaly. To say I'm coming over later and not turn up at all wasn't considered a breach of etiquette. I was brought back to the present. <clears throat> that would be $140, he said, glowing with an outstretched palm. $140? I was told... But it wasn't even five minutes away, I responded. That guy must have meant five US. Hundred and forty dollar, he said, repeating. He wasn't grinning anymore. I gave him two hundred Jamaican dollars and he put it all away. I waited. My change, please. The audacity of him. After overcharging me, he expected a tip as well. So um, that was towards the end of my journey, as you probably realised. Um, the bad, I won't tell you what was in it while I was panicking. But um, yeah, I assume it got to its right destination. And yeah, if it sounds interesting to you, then buy the book. It's on Amazon, on Kindle and paperback. And that's all for now. Bye bye.